Discovery video 137 and in this video we're going to take a look at two races at two different tracks Aqueduct and Oaklawn Park and we're going to cover the topic of pace handicapping as it applies to all the other uh, factors that we cover which is basically everything uh, it's, we're not one dimensional but there is value still as there was back in the late 1980s when I first uh, started recognizing pace handicapping um, those were back in the day you know way before computers so I would sit there and punch on a calculator velocity times and things like that and I had uh, an edge I, it, it, it had given me an edge that the other horse players didn't have and so I started catching a lot of big winners uh, with the pace information okay and then here we are now 30 years later and um, the same basic uh, concept is still an advantage to this day it's like there was a small group of people who latched on to pace handicapping as a, a very important aspect yet the majority of the of the betting public just does not recognize the pace uh, part of the handicapping process as strongly as let's say the final time speed rating okay or even the horse's class they really rank it you know they don't really pay attention um and you know this is a very precise sport when it comes between winning and losing i mean you could have the winner and the loser of a race can literally be one second apart um uh, so i'm going to log in to the free area i'm on the home page uh, the races we're going to look at, I'm going to qualify them for you. Uh, they're both five-star preferred races. Here on the Horse Racing Digest page, you have the Discovery video button up there. That's always there. Uh, the link down here or the banner takes you to the same page. Uh, under the big red arrow is my listing of value odds of preferred races. Now, in these races... Uh, my 15 years of research has shown me that uh, I have a much better than average chance on getting that nice price value odds or overlay winner. And all of these I have rated in power or strength from 1 to 5 stars, 5 stars being the strongest. Both of these races we're going to look at, at Oak Lawn and Aqueduct, are claiming condition conditional claimers uh it's where you'll see clm on the it'll say clm the claiming price and then it'll have some kind of letter or combination of letters and numbers to the right of the uh claiming price now, any letter or number to the right of the claiming price or combination thereof makes it a conditional claimer these are the strongest plays this is five star play take a look first here at the uh, first race at Aqueduct on this particular Thursday as you can see here we have a uh, claiming 30,000 uh, non-winners of something the B makes it the conditional claimer uh, the top pick in the race is uh, the value odds horse number five writing on the wall now this horse has got a ton of things going obviously you can see all these these icons but I wanted to focus on two particular pieces of information that I feel personally are very strong let me preface by saying that still the most important thing is the odds in their post time so with uh, writing on the wall here number five if this horse were to be bet down to let's say uh, five to one near post time six to one I wouldn't be betting it I probably would pass the race I I need my value odds horses first and foremost okay this is the most important thing that I mention in every video I for me to play a value odds horse 
it first has to be going off near post time at high odds. I like it to be, you know, in the neighborhood of 10 to 1 or higher. All right. And once again, I will not bet a value odds horse that is bet down. Okay. 8 to 5 to 1, 6 to 1, etc. I will not bet that horse. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will bet against that horse if there's a something else wor of worthy value in Group A. Uh, but I want to focus here. Um, you're going to see the uh, yellow and blue pace icon. And what that stands for is that this horse has the best early and middle pace ratings of the field. As you can see here are the ratings for the field. Uh, it's got a 93 and a 104 middle pace, which is five points to the best. That's a pretty strong move there. That's a pretty strong number for a middle pace rating. Now, um, obviously a horse that has an early and middle pace uh, has the option now don't think that this is a go to the lead type of horse only as a matter of fact a lot of these horses that have that icon you will see them come from just off the pace it's that they have enough pace that they can be on the lead or if they are rateable all just off the lead but they have they have the best pace now the turn time rating which I highlighted here at 111 is the highest in this field uh, I think by far the next highest rating would be a 103 right there um, so 111 is by far the highest turn time rating turn time measures the speed run around the final turn how a horse accelerates going around that stretch turn some horses can accelerate around turns much better than other horses. So those horses here again, we're looking at a distinct advantage. And uh, as as uh, the pace handicapping itself goes, turn time ratings are even less used by handicappers, which gives the user of turn time ratings a very big advantage because you're using something that let's say 95% of the betting public is either doesn't know exists or doesn't give any credit to or doesn't pay any attention to think about that as an advantage and this is what this is what it's all about in this game is having advantages if we have everything that everybody else has guess what if we're doing what everybody else is doing uh it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna be full time a long time long term profit which is what we look for we got to be using things and that other people that the majority of the public is not using. We need to find the edge. And these are two specific things. And when you have a horse that has both the early mid pace icon best and the best turn time rating, which by the way is angle 32 over here on the Horse Racing Digest page, the... Uh, Free ebook, uh, the 36 proven winning overlay angles. Okay. Excuse me a minute here. Okay. As a matter of fact, angle two is the uh, angle two and angle 32. Angle two is the early mid pace advantage. Okay. Um, and it says here take note and give extra credit to the pace qualifying horse who also has the highest turn time rating okay and angle 32 is the turn time rating angle itself and, and as I wrote here uh, several years ago Want a distinct advantage over the majority of the betting public? This particular rating gives you exactly that. And that's kind of what I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Uh, the Full Card Report's turn time rating has proven unique and very powerful for many years, yet not used or known by the majority of the players. 
which is basically what I said also just a few minutes ago. Uh, in order to gain an advantage in this game, the player needs to be using something the majority of the betting public is not. Here again, that's exactly what I just talked about. Uh, the horses that run the highest turn time ratings have proven to be the best at making that all-important quick move on the final turn. Okay. Uh, here, t let's take a look at this too. This, this kind of correlates with uh, angle two. Take note if the horse with the highest turn time rating in the race also has the highest rating for either early, mid, or late pace. This is a very positive bonus. And of course, our horse that we're looking at has the best early and mid pace as designated by the yellow and blue pace icon. Okay, So basically what we're looking at here is we're in a five-star preferred race. This is the type of race we look for. We're on a value odds horse that's going off at, let's see, this one was going off at 10 to 1 near post time. Okay, uh, So everything is in effect. The odds requirement are there. The horse having the best pace plus turn time, that's telling me that this horse can probably go to the lead if it needs to and go wire to wire. Now, Something interesting that both the, the horses in this race and the one I'm going to show you in Oklahoma next, this horse hasn't raced in 68 days. It has workout points of 90. 100 is perfect in my rating. Workout points measures not the time of the workout, but the pattern of workouts, which I feel is much more valuable as a, uh, to the better because everybody can recognize a fast workout and basically every professional thoroughbred can run a fast workout so what what kind of value does that have I mean it's a good extra little cherry on the cake if it's there but I I feel that rating and gauging the the pattern of workouts is much more valuable for the horse player so uh, this one hasn't raced 68 days however 90 uh, workout points means the horse has had some pretty good, pretty decent uh, action in the morning uh, steadily coming up to this race on the return. Now, let's take a look. It's this one here. Writing on the wall, uh, the, the elder, the elder seven-year-old, the elder statesman of the field, and you you gotta love these geldings. And there's there's one thing I can tell you, there's there's nothing more reliable than a seven year old gelding. Okay, there's something about that magic number. Even eight, even you can press that to eight. I love seven and eight year old geldings because they seem to be like the veteran that still has enough gas in the tank to get the job done. Consider. A seven and eight year old gelding, something like a Mike Smith of jockeys. Okay? Been around a long time, but still has the ability to win consistently and impressively. And that's what this um, this gelding did. Uh, as you can see, uh, went to the lead here. And, you know, at the aqueduct uh, inner dirt, 47 and 4 and 12 and 4 is pretty, pretty fast fractions, actually, uh, for this class level. And yet, he got to that, to that middle pace rating here. And then, from here to here, this is where the turn time rating kicks in. So, basically, his momentum carried all the way to the finish line where he was winning extending his lead by finishing eight and three quarter lengths at the front and i think in this using all my strategies in this race i think we collected around nine hundred dollars there okay now let's take a look next at on the same day the first race at oaklawn park 7500 claimer nine winners of three okay we have it yet again another five star preferred race Yet again, we have one value odds horse. This one, number one, Yu Hush, uh, also has what we talked about, uh, the 
pace icon plus the best turn time rating that I have highlighted here. Uh, also a 111. And let's see, I think that would be pretty much a five point edge there. Yes, five point edge over the three horse. So that's that's pretty significant. This horse is going to be moving around that final turn, okay? And uh, he's got also the early pace to either be on the lead or near the lead, wherever the jockey wants, you know, thinks is a better position, okay? And um, once again, when you have that combination of angle 32, which is the ter best turn time, and the blue and yellow, okay? This is a very strong combination. The and the like I like I wrote in the book and like I, I spoke about, ninety percent probably to ninety five percent of the betting public is not using this type of information. So that in turn gives the you the user, who the person who does use this information, it gives that person a very big advantage, and that's why you're able to catch horses at high odds because they kind of fly in under the radar of the majority of the betting public. Because, you know, the majority of the betting pu public, they just use, you know, final time speed ratings and what the horse finished last time out, which in this case was Churchill Downs 9 out of 10. Not impressive. That's what they look at. And also, a little parallel here that this horse has. Um, also, that other horse at Aqueduct didn't rate in, what, 68 days? This one hasn't raced in 83 days, plus has a 94 workout points rating. So you see the parallel between the two horses at uh, uh, at Aqueduct and the, that I showed you previous and, th and this one here at Oakland Park. Uh, early pace of 92, which is, let's see, the next closest is an 88. Mid pace of a 104, next closest is a 98. So this horse really, really has... A big pace advantage there and um, once again the odds the uh, if the odds aren't there all this stuff I'm talking about you can throw out the window if this horse is five to one I don't care how many pace icons it has uh, five to one is not going to get the job done for me but they were letting this one go at 20 to one so uh, that made this horse absolutely playable and uh, jumpable and uh, as you can see here, I find this interesting that Perry Compton uh, laid this one out. Coming from the inside, the horse had enough speed, but he somehow, look at how he rated the horse. You know, when you come from the one hole in, in either sprint races or route races, if your horse has speed, it's really to your advantage. But uh, it looks like he was able to relax. Here here again, another gelding, a five-year-old gelding here. Uh, he was able to relax the horse and perfectly time the ride there, okay? And uh, he pretty much was toying with them. I think he could have won by uh, more. But uh, the uh, final odds was 19 to 1, so that's a 40-20 winner there. And I think also with all my strategies, I think this was another eight or nine hundred dollar score between the exactas and daily doubles and all that other shit uh, that we play. Excuse my English. It's two days in a row now that I'm cursing on the videos. Uh, I think it's a sign that I'm becoming a cranky old man. I don't know. I don't know. That's possible. I'm gonna be a grandfather for the fourth time coming up in a few months. So I, I think with each grandchild, I'm going to start throwing out more curse words uh, simply because I'm just old and grumpy. But uh, I, I do find it fascinating, really, that when, that when I started using paying attention to pace handicapping back in the 80s, and I had the advantage then, that here I am in the year 2012, and I still have the same advantage. I find that fascinating that the, the majority of the betting public still is is not on with this information. Now, why that is, I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't care. It, it, you know, it, it would it doesn't give me any benefit to know why they don't use this information. All I know is it's 
pace handicapping alone has put two kids of mine through college plus 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 and that's just that's just utilizing pace information not to mention all the other good stuff that we have access to here this video I wanted to focus on the uh, situation where you have a horse that has the best pace and the best turn time rating of course uh, you know that particular thing that you know that like it should be a little super mini angle in and of itself and probably it will be in my fourth book uh, the, my second and third book are now on the members page uh, members can can check that out now you'll see the links there uh, the first book is obviously in the free area, and I guess there's going to have to be a fourth book. I don't know. In any case, uh, I, I think you learned some good information here, um, and uh, in my opinion, very valuable. Uh, and I, I find it interesting how, the, how both horses that we looked at paralleled each other right down to the layoff and the workout points. I found that to be very interesting, didn't you? Okay, great. Thank you very much for viewing. Good luck with all your bets.